create our own sets of push-up bars from a combination of 3D printing and wood, and we'll also create completely wood ones and compare them. So stick around. Push-up bars are super simple. They can be as cheap as $20 and as much as $100. Even though they aren't that expensive, I'd still prefer to make my own set. Now these make push-ups easier on the wrist and they open up other possibilities for exercises as well. They're pretty easy to take with you anywhere and they're small enough to store. The 3D printed concept is my solution for those of you who may not have woodworking tools. If you have the tools, the wood versions can be made for next to nothing from scrap wood. Starting with a 3D printed version, I'd like the handle to pass through the ends. I like the look of the through tenon and it will help for a better connection since we're not using adhesive. These ends will be printed as structural parts with a 1mm nozzle, 4 walls, 30% cubic infill, and I'm using PETG. ABS or other engineering plastics can be used as well. PLA may not be the best choice for this. The handle should be about an inch and a quarter in diameter. Most hardwoods will work. Some softwoods like yellow pine or Douglas fir will work as well. If you're choosing something like poplar, I would recommend a larger dowel diameter. And I have designed this one to allow a store-bought inch and a quarter dowel to be used. And if you do go this route, make sure that the grain is in line with the length of the dowel in each direction to avoid the dowel breaking like a broom handle would. The critical part is how it fits into the ends and it needs to be a tight fit. The best design would include an oval handle to prevent rotation, but I'm keeping it simple and we'll just use the store-bought round dowel. To prevent rotation instead, I've added these nibs which lock the dowel in position along the length and will prevent rotation. On my first attempt, I underestimated the amount of force required to compress the wood for these and the end cracked. To prevent the problem, I resized the nibs to be smaller and I've also taken the time to resize the dowels if they needed it because not all dowels that are store bought are the same size. Now if you are interested in making your own, I would suggest going with the inch and a half poplar dowel. It's cheaper, it conforms better. And because of that, there's going to be less chance of cracking on the ends. I've modified the design also to accommodate inch and a quarter and inch and a half dowels. I felt that the ends could be a little bit taller, so I've modified that as well. Plastic or wood ends will slide around, so I've cut some diamond plate rubber mat and I've used contact cement to adhere them to the ends, and that seems to work really well. The inch and a quarter dowel for my hands is a little bit small. I've taken some old bike handle wrap and they fit much better in my hands now and they also look pretty professional this way. To finish off the end of the wrap, I've just used electrical tape. For the wood versions, I'll be using some scrap yellow pine for the ends. Yellow pine is remarkably strong for a softwood. But that said, I still wanted to make the ends a little bit thicker because we have the weakness of the grain to deal with. I've cut and jointed the pieces to laminate them together using some wood glue. I've 3D printed a template as well and traced the same shape as the 3D printed version and I can also mark the center point of the holes at the same time. And with the wood versions it's important not to drill all the way through because of the weakness of the grain. Off camera I've cut the basic shape at the compound slide saw and I'm using the oscillating spindle sander to fine tune the shape. The largest Forstner bit I have is inch and 3 eighths. So in order for the inch and a half dowels to fit, I've resized the ends on the lathe. And the dowel, unfortunately, is not completely centered, but for these, it's not really critical. I wanted a really permanent, strong connection to the ends that will not break. So I am using construction adhesive. It has the ability to bond well to face grain and end grain. It's also waterproof and it happens to expand as it cures. And in this case, it was perfect because I didn't size the dowels quite right and there was a little bit too much slop. This version is much easier to keep the ends in alignment with each other. The plastic version tended to follow the grain and rotate a little bit as it goes further on. I've used the same technique for the rubber pads on this version and because they look a little bit plain, I've also 3D printed an emblem to embellish them a little bit more and make them a little bit more pro. If you're wondering just how strong the combo of wood and plastic is, I have a load cell rated for 3,000 pounds. I'll be using this 3D printed spacer to sit on the dowel correctly and a clamp. This is as tight as I can go by hand with a clamp, but it's pretty respectable at over 500 pounds. 
As far as looks go, both look pretty good. The plastic version, I think, looks a little bit more professional, but the wood one isn't far off. They're both more than strong enough to withstand well beyond the heaviest loads that can be applied here. For comfort, the plastic version with the wraps feels a little bit better on the hand, but without the wraps, the larger dowel is better. I believe both are going to last a really long time. The plastic one has the potential to loosen up over time though, if the dowels aren't properly dried, but it really shouldn't be a problem if these are store-bought. Each end takes about 300 grams of filament, so they cost over $20 just for the ends, and another 10 or so dollars for the dowel. Now if you have the tools, you can turn the dowel on your own to make that a little bit cheaper. So if you don't have the woodworking tools, the plastic version is a really good option. All the other parts are available on Thingiverse if you'd like to make your own. If you do have the tools, the wood version will be cheaper and pretty quick to make. And now for your entertainment, watch me attempt a handstand push-up for the very first time. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you subscribe and also check out my Patreon link in the description if you'd like to support the channel. Let me know what you think about these push-up bars and if you have any better ideas for assembly, I'd like to hear from you. Take care everybody, we'll see you on the next one.